So if you will run PG, it will look something like this. And then what I will do is I will file open. And then I will go to the folder where I want to open a file. This is on my desktop. So I will just go to my desktop. And this is the file that I want to open. So I will just double click this. This file will open up like this, right? And the first thing that I want to do here is I want to select this scalar and I want to tell it what is the size of this image. So what I will do is I will click on this line. I will zoom in uh, with by pressing shift and scrolling in with this mouse button. And then I will keep pressing shift so that the line will always be straight. If I do not press shift, then the line can be up and down. So I will keep pressing shift so line is straight and then I end this up here. So then I have this line. So now this line is one micrometer long, uh, which means it is 1000 nanometers. Um, if I select, so, so then I say uh, analyze and set scale. I can also here set scale as this is distance is one micrometer because it is one micrometer. So I set here distance in pixels. Oh no, I, I did it wrong. So analyze, set scale. So known distance is, I can, it, it depends on me what I tell this. So it can either be one micrometer or what I prefer because my particles are very small is 1000 nanometers. Okay. So after I set this scale, I click here. So I remove this line. It does not have a selection and then I press shift and I scroll back so I can look at the whole picture. Now the scale is set. What I want to do now is I want to go here in the image adjust and I want to convert it into a grayscale value. Um, at, uh, image color, no image type and 8 bit. So if you, when I will click this, there will not be any color. So now this line will turn gray here as well. What I want to do now is I want to clean up this figure. So what I will do is I will select an area here. And I will right click and say duplicate. It will ask me a new name and then I have this new figure, which is which is without the lower scale. So whatever adjustments I do, it will only look at this figure and measure this figure rather than also considering the other parts that are that I do not want to measure. So it is a way of cropping it and also converting it into a new figure that I want to save for later use as well. Now what I will do is I will go in image, um, adjust and brightness and contrast. Right. So I want to uh, separate my particles from the from the matrix. And what I will do is I will bring this brightness down and adjust this from here as well. So somewhere, let's say here, where I think my particles are bright enough. So I have a very clear bright and dark fringe so I can separate them out, but it is they're not very clear. And this is where we require manual human intervention because we have to see the image and understand what it what is happening with the grayscale and only then we can understand it. Let's say I Yeah, yeah. So I can see the particles, but to tell the computer that this is a particle, it has to be either very bright or very dark. So I can tell the computer, okay, so if it is something very bright, then this is a particle or if this is something very dark, it is a particle. So I have, to, so I have to adjust the brightness and contrast in a way that I can clearly distinguish particles from, from, from the matrix now. Uh, so if I reset it again, you will see that this was our initial image. And then if I adjust it a little, you see that now this is our image, which is hmm, the particles are a bit more clear. I will press apply and it will say that the pixels will be permanently changed and we will not be able to go back and I will say, okay. And then I will just close this. Then what I want to do is I want to go in um, image adjust and then I want to press threshold. And this is where we we play with the threshold settings 
to identify the particles. Do you understand this? So now basically what I'm adjusting is if the brightness of an image is, so basically the grayscale value, if the grayscale value of, an, of, of something is bigger than something, then separate it. Or I can also do the other way. So if it is smaller than something, separate it. Because I want to separate my particle, so I'm going on the upper side. And then, for example, if I make it very small, you will see that I will start missing the particles as well. And if I make it too big, then I'm selecting the matrix as well. So then I have to adjust this in a way that I see, okay, so this is too small. And this is where I start getting the matrix in. So I have to be somewhere here. No reference. No reference. So I just have to... Um, Yeah, so of course I, I, I still see that this particle is not selected. This particle is not selected. There, there are a few particles that are wrong. So, but, but, but we will talk about this right now. So I also see that this particle is, is, is not complete here and this particle is not complete here. So, so this will give me slightly uh, wrong results. But if we, if we will do it statistically, so if we will have multiple images, we will do it on all of them and with the same schematics, then we will be statistically more closer. But there is no accurate way of differentiating one particle from another. But the idea is, for example, I adjust this a little bit to see where I get a representative image of what a particle is. Um, and so then... The table, so in the table, it's defined that's more than this size is selected. Yes. Is this, uh, yeah, so so you will see. If I just apply, select apply, it will say that the background has been removed and the image is converted to um, LUD. And then we have these particles separated. Um, now I can construct this figure. So for example, what I can do is, uh, the, something that I easily do is I can process um, and I can go in binary and can go and say fill holes, fill holes. So it will fill these holes that, that, that were there. So now I have more particles, but I know that this was a complete particle. This is missing, this was a complete particle, this is missing, and these maybe are not particles and I want to remove them, right? So to adjust these features, I will use um, this paint. And then I will basically uh, but this is removing it. There was this way of There was this way of adding it. No. Um. Yeah. So then I basically just reconstruct them uh, and reconstruct them in a way that I just close these loops. I can I can right click on it and then change its size as well. So let's say five and then I can zoom in and can let's say fill this. This is not right, but yeah, just 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 to give you an idea. No, uh, and yeah, so then what I do is, for example, I am happy with this image now. Let's say, and then what I do is I say, analyze, analyze particles, and then I adjust the size. So not from zero, maybe from 500 nanometers, 
to infinity and circularity can be anything and then I say show um, outlines so this is this is something that we will talk about now so I say show the outlines uh, clear the previous results then display the results uh, and then I say okay so then it has identified each of these particles it shows its outline and and then it shows its results as well but what I do is I want to have I want to save all these pictures so I want to save this picture um, this one that I um, yeah so I want to save this picture then I also want to save uh, this picture so this is what I selected and then I also want to save this picture so it identified these particles as this and then what I do is I just close this I will show you why and analyze and analyze particles again but I then select this picture and analyze and analyze particles again and now I want to see ellipses and I press OK so it will not close the previous images it will just open up a new one so the idea is the shape of the particle is random but if we want to measure its diameter and its so its length and thickness there is no distinct way of doing it the only way is it tries to fit an ellipse on the shape of the particle and then the best fit is something that then we have a simplified shape so an ellipse with a axis and b axis and a axis is basically the length of the particle b axis is actually the thickness of the article uh, particle and then we have this data for all the particles and this is what I have stored here so you will see that we have area x y x y is basically the the x y of centroid from the origin and then parameter major axis minor axis this is what we are interested in angle circularity circularity is the ratio of these two so this is also something that we are interested in if the circularity is one that means it is purely circular if the circularity is close to zero this means it is very long and then fret is something I don't know and then aspect ratio is the inverse of circularity roundity is also something like this solidity is um, um, is so round round and solidity is basically how well is an ellipse fitting on the initial surface that we had identified so if it is perfectly fitting then solidity is close to 100 if it is very far away from that solidity is less and, and, and so on but we need this data and then we for example what I do is I will file save as and here I save this data for example usually what I do is I select this and then I say underscore this is stats right before doing this what I usually do is I say results summarize so it writes the mean standard deviation minimum and maximum at the bottom in these four lines no no it is not sorted it is based on every particle but just these four lines are added at the end of this file so mean standard deviation minimum and maximum for all these that is what you were asking so can do we want to average it and this is how basically are we add this result and then I want to file save as click this name click here and then we want to write stats right it is a CSV file we, we will check that but but then I want to save this file as well file save as if what I usually do is I select this and then I just rename that is ellipses um, File save as diff. So these are outlines, and this is uh, 
um, particles and this is exactly what it is so it automatically renames this file so this was our original file no, 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 no. yeah 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 but the crop up is somewhere else oh we closed it but yeah so when you right click and um, copy that so then that is basically the yeah so so what so what I do is I have all the files in in one folder and they all have their own names so then it is just that it, the same name yeah so same name but with new extensions and new new names and then I have all the files in so then basically later it will be much easier to run a Python script in one folder which will be able to read all these files and make sense out of them yeah 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 but but that's the idea here what I have also done here is that I have written a macro uh, edit oh this is plugin macro is not here I don't know I will have to I will have to search that but that basically does a few things automatically so you just have to click a little bit less in in in, in steps in between um, but yeah that's the idea what I will do is I will 